Hello everyone, here is Anna and in today's video I would like to show you how I prepare a chamber music piece for a first rehearsal together with other people that I'm going to play this piece with. In this case I have a cello sonata by Brahms, number two in F major. It's a very difficult piece, I've never played it before and I hope to start rehearsing it with a cellist in about two weeks, hopefully, if Corona allows us. <laughs> and in this video, I would just like to show you step by step what do I have to do on my own before I can actually rehearse with um, other people, with a cellist in this case. So the very first step that I usually take is just simply listening to a few recordings. Sometimes I also start directly learning the text, but most of the time I prefer to listen to at least one recording before I actually start uh, practicing a piece on my own. So yes, as you can see, I'm just listening here to a um, video recording, um, watching it and sometimes taking some notes, writing down some comments maybe if I need to um, remember something. And after this is done, I am going to the piano and starting actually practicing. Just simply learning my text on my own, checking difficult places until I feel more or less comfortable with it.
I don't know if you actually um, know it, um, just in case I'm telling it to those who probably don't play the piano or maybe play the piano but have never played chamber music but when we play with chamber music group it's a little bit different for pianists and for other instruments so a pianist always plays with a score where every voice of every instrument you are playing with is written so as you can see here we have like my piano part and the cello part and I actually have to uh, somehow look not only at my piano part, but at the same time I have to follow also a um, cello melody. Um, for other instruments, playing chamber music is different. They just have um, like a part where it's only their melody written, so they just know my part by hearing most of the time, but they sometimes they have never seen it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this experience is a little bit um, different for us. And also for the pianists, you know, it's always like chamber music is always chamber music and our solo repertoire is always something completely different. But for other instruments, when they play, for example, sonatas, it's also considered their solo repertoire which is very interesting like we are performing in one group but the experience is a little bit different for us usually when i practice a solo piece that is written for the piano like just to be performed um, on my own <laughs> I don't do this step immediately and sometimes I don't do it at all but when you practice a chamber music it's quite important the same with a concerto I would say because concerto is also some kind of um, chamber music just with a bigger group of people but I definitely have to practice it at least for a little bit with metronome just because you know when you practice a solo piece you can really take your time and um, just practice it until you feel comfortable to play it through in one tempo and even still like even on the stage you can always take a little bit of time in the difficult places you know um, of course, it's better not to do that, but it's theoretically possible. And when you play a chamber music piece, it's not possible even on the first recording, because you cannot just stop and um, tell your partner to wait until you play this difficult passage. This is just not going to happen. So it's very important in the chamber music piece to check everything if you can play it in one tempo through so as you can see i start with a slower tempo um, i see immediately which places i have to practice separated extra if i cannot play it in one tempo and then i increase or sometimes decrease the general tempo and just going through um, piece or a movement or even maybe like a difficult place one page um, over and over again until I feel comfortable playing it in one tempo with the metronome. Um, I try not to overdo it because of course especially when you play a romantic piece like this Brahms Sonata I don't want to play it like um, you know like a classical piece completely in one tempo of course there will be some Ritenutos and some actually randos and some tempo changes um, inside one movement. But um, yes, as I said, it's still important just to know that you can play it in one tempo and then your partner also will, comf will feel comfortable with you playing a piece. Check the cello melody on its own. As you can see, sometimes we have here a bass cliff, but sometimes we also have this, um, I think it's called in English, alto cliff, I'm not sure, we'll write it down. And um, because pianists don't play in this cliff, so I have to be careful, but it's also a good opportunity actually to 
practice playing another cliff. But anyways, the idea is that I also know the cello melody very well. So I usually go through and um, just play it like a side read. And the very last step might seem a little bit strange to you. And the funny thing about it is that I believe every professional musician does it, but somehow it's, it um, seems to be a little bit embarrassing and people usually don't talk about it. But I'm quite sure like really everybody does it at least once in a while. So um, in order to prepare for a rehearsal better, you know that we don't need to spend some time in the rehearsal just for like actual learning the text. So I have the recording like in my um, headphones and at the same time I just play my part which helps me a lot with like learning the music, you know, just understanding what cello is playing and how can I follow the cello better and how we work together it's not necessary this step, but it's just, um, it's so helpful that I don't see any reason to miss it. But usually as soon as we have the first rehearsal, I don't do it anymore because then we have our own like little details like dynamics and own tempos. And... But just in order to be well prepared for the very first rehearsal, this is extremely helpful. So. Um, yes, would also recommend um, to do it. There is actually nothing embarrassing about that, but somehow professional musicians just don't talk about it. <laughs> I don't know why. And yes, that's it. That's um, how I prepare for the first rehearsal. Usually after uh, the first time when we meet and play together in a chamber music group, the way I practice on my own changes a lot. But I guess just the first rehearsal is always the most difficult part. So, and I just don't like to waste my time and to waste the time of my partners. So I try my best to be well prepared for the first rehearsal. It's of course not always possible. I don't always have lots of time to be well prepared, but if it's possible, I try my best. So, I hope this video was interesting for you, maybe you can use some of my tips that I uh, was talking here about and I will see you in the next video. Bye!